Hello, my name is Edwina Arch and I'm the funding lead for Active Derbyshire and Active Knots and this is a short video about Sport England's new Community Emergency Fund. For this session we'll just have a look at some initial observations about the fund. We'll also have a look at the criteria and a, an overview of the fund. We'll have a look at uh, some of the questions that you'll see within the application form and how you can find out about other funding opportunities that might be able to help you during this current crisis. There's a few observations we can make. Firstly, it's a £20 million pot of money that's awarding grants of up to £10,000. Now, clearly, the average award is going to be less than £10,000, so there's going to be a significant number of awards that are going to be made through this fund. However, competition is going to be high. I'm making this recording as of the 3rd of April, and the fund was launched on the 31st of March, and I know within a day and a half of them launching the funds that they'd already had over 1,100 applications. So it's a very, very popular fund. There's a lot of competition for it. There are several ways to look at this. Firstly, there appears to be a huge need for this fund and also there appears to be a little bit of panic around in terms of accessing it. However, I have heard that one or two of those initial applicants have regretted being a little bit too hasty and they feel that they could have prepared a better application if they'd just given it a little bit more consideration. Now, this is a really important point to make because currently you can only submit one application to this fund. There is also a need for applicants to have exhausted um, whether other government opportunities, government funding opportunities um, are available at the moment. So if you go onto Sport England's website that details the information about this fund, they have included links that you can click through to see what those other funding opportunities are. Um, make sure that you do that before completing your application to this particular fund. The Sport England assessors will have an understanding of what those other funds are. So just make sure that you've uh, looked at that before completing the Sport England fund. It's likely that Sport England will be accessing the uh, assessing the, the demand for this fund over time. Um, but I am making a little bit of an assumption here that there will be some element of first come, first served. They have said that they will turn around applications within 10 working days. So clearly, if there are good applications being submitted that are eligible for the funding, then clearly they will be making awards uh, fairly quickly. However, on balance, I would say, Firstly, make sure that you have looked at the other government funding sources first to see whether they um, are more relevant uh, at this particular time. Uh, once you've exhausted those poss possibilities and you've completed your Sport England application form, just make sure you're happy with it before you submit it. Uh, and finally, just don't take too long about doing all this. Uh, obviously, time is, is important. I would also recommend that you download a dummy version of the application form as well before you start completing the online version of it. If you go online straight away, you'll find certainly at the moment that you, there is no way of saving it. So it's basically you've just got to do it and get on with it. However, if you download a dummy application of it, which can be found on their, their website, on the web page for this fund, it's towards the bottom of, of the web page, you will at least have some um, time to prepare your answers and make sure that you've, you've got a good bid together before you submit it. Um, I think that's that's really important. It's worth having a look at the purpose of the fund. Uh, clearly it's an immediate response to the current coronavirus crisis. It's targeted at those organisations that are of highest financial need. However, you do not have to be an organisation that's previously been funded through Sport England. So it's, it's open to non-Sport England funded organisations as well. They do recommend that if you're already in receipt of Sport England funding, for example, perhaps through the Community Asset Fund or the Small Grants Programme, that you get in contact with your case or relationship manager at Sport England before you apply. Uh, their con contact details should be on previous correspondence that you've received from Sport England. Uh, and then they will be able to discuss uh, the, the options with you. If you haven't got that paperwork at hand, just give Sport England a, a, a call and I'm sure they'll be able to put you through to the correct person. The fund's open to local sports clubs. It's also open to the voluntary and community sector, as well as those voluntary and community sector organisations that deliver sport or physical activity. It's also open to small charitable tr trusts, as well as regional or county level organisations or leagues. However, it's not open to local authorities, and that includes town and parish councils. It's also not open to schools, colleges or universities or commercial sport and physical activity providers, for example, private gyms. 
it's not open to leisure operators or individuals who are either employed or self-employed within the sport and physical activity sector. The fund can support quite a range of costs, those ongoing running costs. So, for example, your rent, utility costs, which could include insurance costs or your gas, uh, electricity, that sort of thing, uh, facilities or group hire. It can cover core staffing costs, including ca casual staff, but that's the staffing costs that aren't covered by other government schemes. So, as I mentioned earlier, do make sure that you have a look, a look at the link on Sport England's website, which will take you through to the relevant pages in terms of what other government funding is available. They can fund retrospective losses from the 1st of March of this year, but clearly not before that. So this is when the current crisis uh, started to take hold. In terms of the things that can't be funded, so it's activities or costs, as we mentioned, that are already covered by other government funding opportunities, and that includes the rates. Um, it can't fund new activities or events or capital works or costs at this point beyond the end of July 2020. Now, Sport England have said that they will be continuously reviewing the current crisis, so there may be an extension to this funding at some point in the, in the future, but at the moment the programme only funds costs between the 1st of March through to the end of July. Sport England is looking to make awards of between £300 up to £10,000 and in exceptional circumstances they may make awards over £10,000 but that would be by exception. I would strongly recommend that when you're looking at the, the finances that you need to be covered over this period that you refer to previous financial records so that you can make a good est estimate of the kind of costs that you will be incurring over this period and the period is between the 1st of March up to the end of July and also the sort, sort of income that you would have expected to receive over this period of time. The assessment period in terms of um, how long Sport England will take to, to look at the applications and turn them around, they, they have said that they will be trying to turn them around within 10 working days. Now, as mentioned earlier, they've had a significant number of applications already, so it remains to be, to, to be seen whether they will be able to turn applications around in that time scale. Uh, a key point really to be taken from this is that for other funds such as Sport England Small Grants Programme or the Community Asset Fund, if they had a query on an application form, they often got in contact with the applicant to, to find out a little bit more information before making their decision. Unfortunately, with this fund, they haven't got that luxury. They are looking to turn bids around very, very quickly and they have got a massive demand for this fund. So the key point really here is to make sure that all the information that you include in your application form is clear, it's relevant, it's detailed and is enough there for the assessor to be able to make a decision on your bid. It's worth looking at the criteria for the fund. So there's four key criteria. So the first of the criteria is around the audience and the reach of your organisation. So they're particularly interested in organisations that deliver activities in disadvantaged areas. They're also interested in organisations that deliver to a number of different groups. So that includes women and girls, um, people with disabilities, people that are on low income, etc. So any of those groups that are listed on the slide um, of this, this presentation. They're also interested in organisations that are maintaining an element of self-employed workforce that are not covered by any of that other government funding that's been uh, referred to in earlier slides. The second of the four criteria points is around the role that your organisation plays. So they're particularly interested in organisations that actively deliver or enable community sport or physical activity uh, to happen within the last 12 months and are proactively staying in touch with the participants in this period of crisis. Sport England have allocated £20 million to this particular funding programme. So Obviously, it's limited in terms of the number of organisations that they can fund, so they will be looking to support those organisations that have the greatest financial need. However, they will also be looking to see whether applicant organisations have taken any actions to minimise the financial impact of the current crisis. And they will also be looking at what levels of reserves that applicant organisations have as well. There will be an expectation that organisations will have some reserves. Clearly, that's good practice, good governance to have some level of reserves. Um, but I think if you've got a huge amount of reserves uh, in the bank, then uh, your chances of success may not be as great as those that have got um, lower levels of reserves. But don't be too worried if you have got reserves in your bank, because clearly that's, that's good financial practice.
The fourth criteria of this fund relates to the impact of not receiving any funding during this period of uh, crisis. So you'll need to demonstrate the consequences of not receiving any funding and how that impacts on your uh, organization's ability to deliver sport or physical activity. And they will be looking at that with reference to those particular beneficiary groups that we looked at in the first slide. So for example, women and girls or um, people living uh, within areas of deprivation or low income or also people that have disabilities, etc. So there's that long list of uh, particular priority groups that Sport England's interested in supporting. I strongly recommend that you download the dummy application form that can be found on Sport England's website. So if you scroll down towards the bottom of the page, you'll find the dummy application there. Uh, if you have a look at that and complete that before you go onto the online portal, unfortunately, as it stands at the moment, you are un unable to save your work before you submit it. So it's basically one go when you go onto that online portal. So download the application beforehand and have a go at completing it. Um, the first couple of sections are the obvious stuff that you would see on any application form in terms of the questions they're asking you. So it's contact details and organizational details. And then the, the important bits are towards the end of the application form. So it's regarding the kind of funding that you're needing, how much you need and the sort of expenses, uh, that sort of thing. And then there's uh, a section regarding related information. So that's asking about you to describing the work that you do. Uh, the sort of activities that you've done in the last 12 months, what efforts you're doing to stay in touch with your participants during this period of lockdown, uh, what would the consequences be if your organisation wasn't su successful in securing the funding, and if there's any other support or guidance that would help you at this time. If you're working with Active Derbyshire or Active Knots at the moment, uh, in any form, whether you're within one of our priority areas or you're receiving, for example, young people's funding, etc., um, make sure you make uh, reference to that within your application form as well. Sport England is very aware of the work that we're doing within priority areas and with priority groups, um, so that, that will be of interest to them. If you find that this current funding opportunity is not um, of any benefit to your organisation for whatever reason, we are uploading information about other funding opportunities that are happening at the moment. It is a very, very fluid scene at the moment, so things are changing on a daily basis. And as a consequence, we're uploading information onto our websites, the Active Knots and the Active Derbyshire websites. Um, as soon as we get information about funds that are appropriate to the sector. So if you go onto the funding uh, pages, so if you look at the top of the screen, there's a tab that's uh, marked funding, click onto that and you'll get onto the page that I've done the screen dump on this particular slide. And if you look at in the top sort of left hand corner in the middle of the screen, there's a little box that says funding news. So all the information regarding funding opportunities that I'm coming across at the moment, I'm adding to that. So if you click onto that box, you'll see the list of other funding opportunities that are happening at the moment. Probably the one that's of most interest will be what the National Lottery Communities Fund is looking Looking to do with their funding. Uh, as of the recording uh, date, which is the 3rd of April, I don't know anything at the moment other than they, they are looking at making some changes. So that's a moving landscape. Also, pretty well on a daily basis, we're finding out about other pots of funding that's changing to adapt to the current crisis. So if you want to keep up to date, um, just keep checking that uh, particular link every now and again. Alternatively, you can subscribe to our newsletter, either the Active Knots or the Active Derbyshire newsletters. If you go to our home page, you scroll about a third of the way down the page, you'll be able to complete the information there. Just ask for your name and your email address and we can add you to the databases. Thank you for listening to this presentation. I hope you found it useful. For further information about this fund, just go to Sport England's home page. If you want to contact me about anything, my email address is detailed on this slide along with my telephone number. Thank you for listening.